Hey everyone, it's Brie from Homemade on Our Homestead. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 favorite sewing essentials and why you need them. So here on this channel, I like to share DIYs, crafts, and sewing projects. And I'm always getting asked questions in my sewing videos, particularly about the tools and notions that I'm using when I'm constructing my projects. So I thought I would compile a list of my top 10 favorite sewing notions that I absolutely love and probably couldn't sew without them and share those with you here today. So if you check the description box down below, I will have a list of all of these items um, in the order that I talk about them and where you can purchase them. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's go ahead and get started. So I always get questions on this, people asking what it's for, um, where they can get it, and what it is. So I purchased this particular tool on Amazon. It was $14.95, I believe was the retail price. And the great thing about this tool is, like I said, it's four tools in one. So this wooden end right here is great for when you're um, trying to push out the corners on some of your sewing projects. This is what I use this end a lot for. Um, if you hold on to it and pull this off, you have a really, really sharp, um, stiletto hiding under that piece of wood. So this is great to help feed fabric um, through your machine. You can also use it as an awl. It is very sharp. And when you're not using it, the little wooden cap just slides right over the top. Then you have this side right here, which as you can see is like at a 45 degree angle. It's nice smooth wood. It works really great for pushing seams down uh, when you're sewing or after you've ironed and you can press the seam wide open with this edge of the tool. So this side reveals the seam ripper. The seam ripper is really sharp. I know sometimes with these tools that claim they can do more than one job, um, usually there's only really one or two functions that work really well. Um, this tool, I have found that everything about it works great. So this Alex Anderson 4-in-1 tool is definitely one of my um, favorite sewing items that I have in my sewing room. So number two on my favorite sewing essentials list would definitely be my Ulfa self-healing cutting mat. So I have these in multiple sizes and different variations of the mats, but for the most part, the mats all look exactly the same. They're all this dark turquoisey green color with yellow gridded lines on them. Um, the lines are very easy to read. And I love that this is a self-healing mat. So after you use your rotary cutter on this mat and you're cutting your fabric strips, the mat kind of molds back together so you can't feel these big deep grooves where you uh, made your cuts. So I really, really like that. Ulfa also came out with these um, style of gridded cutting mats. And this one is kind of like a turntable. So these mats are great because you can actually cut your quilt squares and instead of actually lifting up your square to make another cut, the table itself actually just rotates around, making it really easy to keep your fabric in place, but rotating the mat for easy cutting. So I would say that is my number two favorite sewing essential. So one of the other items I'm frequently asked about in my videos is my iron. This is a Panasonic cordless iron. I purchased this on Amazon about five years ago. Um, they still do carry this exact model. I have heard that some Walmart stores carry them, but I have honestly never seen one at a Walmart. Um, so I will put a link in the description box below of where you can purchase this iron. So it comes in this handy little carrying case with this handle on it. You can pick it up by the handle. It's easy to store. It has these two little buttons, one on each side. You press the buttons and the lid lifts off. So this is a retractable cord. The cord is really long, so it can pretty much be plugged in anywhere. And then obviously when not in use, it just retracts into this little pocket here. This is what the iron looks like from the back side. The iron slides right off. And this is actually the charging station for the iron. So when you're ironing, you have about 45 seconds to one minute's worth of time to iron at the highest possible heat before your iron starts to cool down. Once you take this and you put it back on the charging station and it locks in, you'll see the little light come on so you know it's back in the charging station correctly 
It takes only seven seconds to get back up to the temperature it was before you removed it the first time. It has the off, low, medium, and high settings. There is the option to do um, steam as well as non. So there's an option to turn the steam on or off with just the slide of this lever here. The iron is pretty small and it makes it really nice to use because it doesn't have a cord. So it's easy to just swivel it around when you're ironing. You don't have to worry about the cord getting hooked on your ironing board or on your arm or on your project. And this little button here on the side, you press that in and this pulls off. This is the compartment where you keep your water for your iron. This little lever here lifts up. This is where you would fill it with water. There's a mark on the side that tells you how full um, to fill it up. And once it's full, you just slide it right back on. When it makes the click, it's back on the right way. So this definitely has to be one of my um, favorite sewing items that I have. I use this pretty much every day. If I'm not using it for sewing, I'm using it to iron my husband's clothes for work. Um, retail, this iron is about $60. So Panasonic also does make another um, version of a cordless iron. And that iron is very similar to this one in the fact that it is cordless, it has all the same functions, but it's double-sided. So this point that's on this end of the iron is also on this side. So it's got points on both sides. And I just found for the price that this one served my needs um, well. Again, this one was $60, and I think the other cordless iron that um, Panasonic makes is around 119. So I will put links for those um, down below, but again, I think for the money, this one was a great price. I've had it for a long time and I've never had an issue with it. So next thing on my list of sewing essentials would definitely have to be my magnetic pin cushion. This is made by a company called Grab It. Um, these pin cushions come in an array of colors. If you purchase these on Amazon, I don't know that you have the option to select the color or if they pick it for you and just send it to you. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I purchased my first one of these at a sewing expo that I went to about 12 years ago and the rest of them I did purchase on Amazon. I do keep these at each one of my sewing stations. Um, I found these really, really just helpful for keeping my pins together. I don't have to worry about pins just sliding off, getting onto my floor for somebody to potentially step on. And the great thing about these is if my kids have played with my pins before and they drop them all on the ground, all you have to do is take the pin cushion and just grab the pins with them. So I really, really um, love this pin cushion. It is definitely my um, one of my favorites that I have. I don't even think I have a conventional pin cushion anymore. So I highly recommend a Grab It magnetic cushion just because of the simplicity and ease of use. Um, I do like that it comes in different colors, but honestly, when it comes to pin cushions, I'm not that particular. Um, so yeah, this is definitely on my sewing essentials list. So since we just talked about pins on my sewing essentials, now we're gonna talk about these fun little Clover Wonder Clips. Now this is just a bag that I had um, laying around. The, the clips do not come in this bag. But these little clips are so handy to use for so many things. Um, I use these to attach my bindings on my quilt. So I will actually take all of these clips and I will go around the entire perimeter of my quilt um, laying the binding flat like it needs to be sewn on. And I clip these on and then I sew. So I do the entire binding and then I sew it instead of doing one little section at a time. So these are the Clover brand clips. I know you can buy generic clips on Amazon and some of the craft stores. I personally found that the generic ones did not hold up over time, that they broke really easily and that the spring was not as strong as these Clover clips. So I use these a lot for most of my sewing projects. I like to use these clips in place of pins when I'm sewing with waxed canvas, which I do quite a bit. I don't like having to go back and re-iron the canvas to kind of hide the holes that the pins sometimes make. So these clips are definitely an investment, but one that I think is worthwhile if you plan on sewing for a while or don't really like using pins. These are a great option. So those are the Clover Wonder Clips. Next up on my list, is these little mini snips. These are made by a company called Havel. I did purchase these on Amazon. Um, a lot of the 
higher end sewing stores um, that sell sewing machines and expensive sewing notions will carry these scissors. They are made of stainless steel and they run about $19. And that is quite a bit of money for a pair of um, snips. I do keep these at every one of my sewing stations um, on my sewing machines. And the great thing about these little snips that might be kind of hard to see here is that the blade is actually curved up. So this makes it really nice to be able to cut um, those threads super close to your fabric without accidentally poking the end of your scissors through your fabric. So I really love this feature about these particular scissors and they're kind of spring loaded. So when you're clipping your threads, it just, it's got a really nice easy motion to it. You're not actually having to put your finger in a pair of scissors and do this motion to open the scissors up and down. Again, that's not really a big deal, but I just really love these scissors. Um, my mom purchased these first and I actually wasn't even sure I wanted to invest in them. I thought they were kind of expensive for the price and now I can't imagine not having these at my sewing station. So these scissors are definitely on my list of favorite sewing items. So one of my other items on my sewing essentials list would definitely have to be my new rotary cutter. So I've only had this one since February. I purchased it at a sewing expo here in town. Um, it definitely was pretty pricey. It was $49.95, which is more than I would normally pay for a rotary cutter. These are the ones that you guys typically see me using in my videos. Um, these are by the Ulfa brand, which is the brand that also makes my cutting mat here. I do love these blades because I love the ergonomic easy grip of these ones. So you would squeeze, oops, so you would squeeze the black handle here and it engages the blade, let up on the handle and the blade is disengaged and it goes back into the safety position. So I do really love these rotary cutters um, for the price. I think these ones are about $29. So I've been told that Ulfa is actually not making this ergonomic grip rotary cutter anymore. And here's some differences between this rotary cutter and my Ulfa one. This one is made of solid metal, so the handle is metal, as well as the safety that the blade hides on top of. This is a metal piece as well. And this handle is really, really weighted. So at first when I tried this out, I wasn't sure that I liked it. I thought it kind of weighed too much for a rotary cutter. And then I realized why. Instead of having to put extra pressure down when you're cutting your fabric, the weight of the handle and the weight of all the metal pieces on the rotary cutter itself actually does some of the work for you, which is just really great. Another feature I really like about this particular cutter is this little button right here and how you engage the blade to start cutting. So if I was gonna cut a piece of fabric, you'd push down on the blade and all you do is give it a little tap. This pushes the safety up and the blade in the cutting position like it is right now. So you would go ahead and cut all of your fabric and when you're done cutting, all you do is flip the cutter over, tap it on the surface and the blade is disengaged and goes back onto the safety setting. So I really like it. It makes it really easy just to tip the rotary cutter back and forth to engage it and to disengage it. Again, the weight of this rotary cutter is fantastic. So I've really enjoyed using this since I purchased it. Lip edge rulers. So these particular rulers, um, I found out about through my mom who's been sewing and quilting since I was a little kid. And these rulers, I absolutely adore. So on the one end of the ruler, might be kind of hard to see. This is like a little curved edge of plastic here. This is the lip edge. So this edge actually hooks on to the edge of your ruler. You can, you'll hear it snap down here. And now I can glide this ruler easily all the way down my cutting mat surface and it stays straight and it's fantastic to use. Kind of like all of the other tools I've showed you guys today, this particular ruler comes in many different sizes. I think I have about six different um, particular sizes of this brand of ruler. This is by, I don't know if I'm gonna say this correctly, but Olipfa. Um, and then I purchased this extra guide by the same company that um, kind of glues onto the top of the ruler as a protective guide for your fingers. 
So obviously if you are cutting your fabric, you're not gonna have a slip. Your blade is not gonna go up on top of your ruler because it's protected by this little shield of plastic here. So I really, really like this feature um, on this ruler. So this is definitely one of my favorite sewing tools. Um, these are the only rulers that I actually own anymore. All my previous ones, um, besides my specific or specialty rulers, I've given away to different quilting guilds and things like that. These are the rulers I prefer to use because of this lip edge and the fact that they hook onto the edge of my mat. I feel like it's really eliminated um, a lot of error from my cutting, which in turn is going to eliminate a lot of error with your sewing. Measure twice, cut once. That's that's what I've always been told. So yes, I really, really love these rulers. I love that these rulers are clear acrylic. Um, I have gone ahead and I put some little grips on the back of my ruler. So when it's sitting on top of the fabric, it doesn't shift around. Um, but yeah, this would definitely be on my sewing essentials list. So next up on my list of sewing essentials would definitely be my Cam Demore wool pressing mat and my Clover Mini Steamless Iron. So the reason I put these two items together is I have them next to my sewing stations together and this is how I use them. So if I'm sewing a handbag or making a quilt block and I need to press the seams to one side, I always like to have a small iron and a pressing surface that's available so I don't have to get up and move from my sewing machine. It makes it really convenient and saves me a lot of time. So that's why I put these items together particular um, pressing mat is 18 inches long by 12 inches deep. Um, it's the perfect size to sit next to my machines. It's about a half an inch thick. It is really dense um, felted wool and the great thing about using this particular sewing mat instead of having a small ironing board next to my sewing station is even if I was using an iron that had steam, the steam does not get all the way through this mat onto my wooden tabletop of my sewing surface. These two items, again, grouped together as one, are definitely on my sewing essentials list. So next up on my sewing essentials list would have to be hands down my height adjustable sewing desk. So I purchased two of these when I went to Ikea. I purchased separate table tops for these desks that are made of one inch thick butcher block. So the desk itself, the base is metal and it's really heavy so it stays put. It's not easily tipped over. The surface of my sewing table is big enough for my kids to be able to sit at and color or do homework while I'm working on a sewing project. And the best feature by far from this desk is the height adjustment. So after sitting and sewing for a long time, sometimes it's nice to get up and stretch your legs and be able to sew in a standing position. And I love this desk for that option. So when not in use, the crank folds up and snaps into place underneath the desk top. And when you want to adjust the height either up or down, you pull the handle down into the cranking position and either turn it right or left to raise or lower the table surface. And it's great because you can customize it for whatever sewing chair you have, whatever sewing machine you're using at the time. The sewing space is big enough to have two people sitting and sewing on opposite sides of the table. And the best part is that you can sew standing up. So I really love this desk for that purpose. That's definitely why it's made my top 10 list of sewing essentials. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. These are my top 10 favorite essential sewing items. Um, I would say that I probably have a top 20 list of items that I love to use. So if you guys are interested in seeing another one of these videos with more sewing items that I love, leave a comment down below and I'm happy to make another one. 
As always, I hope this video finds you all well and have a great weekend. Bye.